uh, I am William Chepe. You might know me as Electronaut. I, I've been working with Touch Designer for two years now, and uh, I, I teach online and um, make art myself with Touch Designer. And uh, we're going to have three presentations, and two. Uh, one of them is going to be me, and before me, there's going to be Ian McLachlan. So maybe uh, go ahead, Ian, and quickly introduce yourself. Ian? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ian. Um, I'm an audiovisual artist uh, from the Detroit area. I've been using Touch Designer for a couple years now. Um, and I'm excited to show you some of my MIDI experiments today. Thank you, Ian. And the second um, speaker is going to be Jean-Francois Renault. And maybe also go ahead quickly and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, uh, from Montreal right now. I am, I'm a teacher in interactive media in a university in Montreal. And uh, I did work with uh, Touch Designer since uh, uh, 2014. Uh, I like very much this application. It's never ending. It's uh, we. I'm, I'm still learning every day, and uh, the best way I found to learn uh, about uh, about this is to help people on the Facebook Touch Designer forum. Maybe you, some some about you have already seen my name on different posts because I'm <laughs> quite active over there. But that's it. I, I love the application. I have a passion for it and it's a creative uh, source. Uh, so that's it. I'm, I'm pleased to be invited by Billy M to be part of this uh, talk. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, the first present, uh, the third presenter is going to be me. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead okay, and so show you a, a tool that I'm working on in Touch Designer, of course. Um, which is going to be for audiovisual live performances and I build a UI and everything and I just want to show it to people and also see if people want to co collaborate and help me with it. All right, um, so we're just going to go through all three presentations first and um, they're going to be around 15 to 20 or 25 minutes each. And after that, we're gonna, um, there's a lot of breakout rooms I opened and then we, we can go into those afterwards to, to have a chat about um, the talks and about anything that you, that you like really. So the, the, the workshop, uh, the, um, the meetup is like set to be around two hours long. So um, yeah, it's gonna be approximately around that. So let's, let's see if we we're in deep conversation, then we, we can also do a bit longer. And um, as this is the first, there's going to be more meetups um, these uh, following weeks. And also, apart from uh, me and the, the two other speakers, there is also um, some uh, lovely helpers here. So first off, I want to thank you, Phelan. Phelan is our sort of technical um, assistance here. Uh, he, he teaches a lot on Music Hackspace, uh, and he works a lot with uh, Max for Life and Ableton. And I also want to introduce you, Masha. Masha also um, gives workshops here. Maybe you can say a word about yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Masha. I'm based in London. Uh, and I've, I've been doing touch designer for about three years. Um, I'm mostly a visual artist, but I work a lot uh, with live performance and with musicians. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a small uh, four small workshops in the coming month uh, about 3D graphics and how to make it in Touch Designer. So it's awesome to see everybody here and I hope we are going to have an interesting discussion. All right, thank you. Uh, so yeah, make sure you should check out uh, Masha's workshop in May. And the other helper and uh, also teacher and music hex hexspace is Nilly. So maybe go ahead and also introduce yourself quickly. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm um, mainly a music performer and I use Touch Designer for my audiovisual performance. So I'll be uh, teaching that actually next Thursday and the Thursday after 
uh, through Music Hackspace, so you can sign up for those classes. Um, yeah, so I perform under the name Obscenity State, uh, so you can check out some of my work on Instagram. And yeah, let's enjoy this workshop. Sorry, meetup. All right, thank you so much, and uh, thanks for everybody helping here. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask those in the chat. Um, and if you have any questions to the presenters, um, so um, uh, Ian, uh, Jean-Francois and me, then we're gonna have breakout rooms for that, for those specific uh, presentations as well as others afterwards. So keep your questions and maybe note them for, for later. So we're, now I'm gonna just uh, give you the mic sort of, Ian. And for the next 20 minutes or so, please, uh, listen to, to Ian and we'll see each other afterwards. So um, today we're gonna work on generating a uh, sort of landscape with MIDI. Um, and then we're gonna use that to send MIDI um, to a synthesizer. So here I have a blank touch project open. Um, just with a camera on my launch pad, which I'm using as my MIDI controller. So I'm gonna plug that in real quick. And try to center it a little better. <clears throat> um, and then I'm going to open up Ableton, which I'm using to receive MIDI. Um, and open the preferences. And I'll be using loop B um, to route MIDI. <clears throat> It's a MIDI router that you can download. It shows up in um, all your programs. So here I'm saying the input is loop B, and then that should trigger my synthesizer, which I just have um, an operator uh, bell going. So we're done with the Ableton setup back into touch designer and then I'm going to set up my MIDI in touch designer um, by going to the MIDI device mapper create new mapping and I'll be using my launchpad mini as an in and out device and I'll create a new device and use loop B as another output device and then that's done so now we can create a MIDI input and you can see that it's device one which is my launch pad so now when I hit the buttons we see all the channels come up so <clears throat> this is like a list of our uh, incoming MIDI values that you get when you press the buttons uh, but you can see here that they're not entirely sequential. There's gaps. So I'm going to just populate this list by pressing all the buttons. <clears throat> and then from there, I'm going into a count. Um, so this will allow us to set a loop. Um, for when it resets to zero, it'll increment by one. Um, so I'm changing the limit to loop min max and the maximum to five. So now um, each button press adds one until it gets to five and it resets. Uh, I'm not sure why that's weird now. Um, and then from there, we'll go into a map. And I'm just going to multiply this by 0 0.255. <clears throat> and from there, I'm going to go into a shuffle. And we'll say sequence all samples, use for sample only. Oh, whoops, sequence all samples. <clears throat> so 
So as I press more buttons, you can see it starts to create this sort of um, waveform, uh, just like the list of samples. And we're going to use this for our Y transformation. So I'm going to rename this to TY. <clears throat> so now I'm going to make a grid and make it the same resolution as the launchpad grid. So 8x8. Eight eight. Um, and I'm going to make it a NURBS. and a ZX plane. From there, I'm going into a chop to sop, and we can just drag our rename onto it. We only need the TY values, so I'm going to delete TZ and TX from here. You should start to see the transformation. Okay, so I'm going to reset my count real quick. So you can see it's transforming, but it's kind of stuck. Um, oh, whoops. I uh, This is supposed to be ZX plane. Sorry. Not YZ plane. So now you can see it's transforming the grid in the Y direction. Um, and so these uh, MIDI values, when they add up, give you this sort of landscape some topography to look at. Um, from there, I'm going into a convert um, to uh, convert it to a polygon, because remember we had it as a NURBS. <clears throat> but what I want to do is use it inside of an actor, so it needs to be a polygon. Um, so that we can have the best resolution for interaction. Mm -hmm. um, from here, I'm going to add a texture. And we can just leave that as is. And then we're going to go into our actor. Um, actor comp. <clears throat> so in here, we can go inside and turn on the display and render flags turn on update collision shape and we want it to be uh, static for the kinematic state and um, concave for the collision shape and um, you notice too if I oh sorry my launchpad camera is a little off So if I press these buttons here, which are closest to me, it's transforming the grid in the back um, and vice versa. So to fix that, I'm just going to scale this in the Z by negative one. And then that reverses it. So now it's more representative of what's actually going on. Um, yeah, so the reason we want um, a polygon and we want it to be a concave collision shape is because we want to be able to interact with it and um, to, to see uh, your, um, your body 
you can enable the display guide and that'll show us uh, the resolution of it. So for instance, if it's a convex hole or bounding box, like those don't have very good resolution. <clears throat> so that's why we want concave. Um, so here I'm just gonna turn the restitution to one so it has some feedback to it and we should be good with that actor. So now I'm going to make a little render network with a render camera <coughs> light um, and then I'm going to make a null for the camera to look at. So I'm going to drag this into the look at parameter for the camera um, and then adjust the camera and the null. The camera angle. Um, just trying to get get a good view of it. <coughs> um, and then I'll make a constant material for our actor. And I'm going to make a ramp to color it. So here I'm going to make it vertical and I'm going to go for some brown to green or like some dirt to grass, sort of. Okay, so then I'm going to drop that as our material. So here's our mountains. All right, so um, I can reset the count here just to see where it starts. And I need to adjust my camera a little more. So now we have some hills um, that are made from MIDI. But now we want to use them to make MIDI. So we need uh, to create some interactions here. So I'm going to add a sphere, which will be our um, object for our interaction. And I'm going to make it um, a polygon and make it really small. I'm going for 0 0.02 and then that I'm going to put into another actor and here I'm going to um, keep it dynamic and make it a bounding sphere for the collision shape. I'm going to up the mass to 10 um, and then in the bullet tab, I'm going to turn on continuous collision detection and turn the restitution to 1. Um, and I also need to go in here and turn these on. And then I'm um, going to translate a little bit. Oh, it's a little big gonna make it smaller. <laughs> 0 0.02 should be good. <coughs> and I'm gonna put update collision shape on. So um, now we have our two actors, uh, but to get them to interact we need a bullet solver. So I'm gonna make a bullet solver and just go in here and delete what's inside. 
and then um, make it so it address all actors in the scene with the star um, wildcard. And then if we initialize everything and hit start, we should get some bouncing interactions. Uh, but you can see it just bounces off the stage. So we got to make like a little box to contain it. So I'm just going to make a box and go into another actor. Um, this can be static. I'm going to update collision shape, make it concave. Um, and go in here and turn these on. And now it's like getting in the way, so <coughs> I'm gonna turn or turn it into a wireframe, so um, it's not so visible. And then this I'm going to translate a little. So now we have a box to contain our ball, and they're all being addressed by the B solver. So now it stays within the box. I'm going to try to get a better camera angle. OK, that's a little better. So let's make some hills, bullet solver starts in, and it bounces around. OK, so we've got our bounce going on, but we're still not making any MIDI with it. Um, so to do that, I'm going to use the bullet silver chop, and I'm going to drag the sphere actor onto it. And here we can see the translation values for the sphere. And I'm also going to turn on collision info. And then I'm just going to make a simple circle top. And I'm going to change the circle to like 0.2 pixels. And I'm going to drag the colliding parameter to the fill alpha and just multiply it by like 20. <coughs> and then um, going to make the resolution 8 by 8 to match our launch pad and I'm going to do nearest pixel for smoothness and then we can use um, our TX and TZ values for the center X and center Y values so now when we hit the B solver when it collides, you get this little square. Um, and it changes position based on the TX and TZ. Um, so from here, we can plug this into a top two. And we only need one channel. And we need to crop it to the full image. <clears throat> um, then from here, we're going to put this into a chop to and not do anything with it. Just go back into a chop or a dat to chop. Um, and then in the dat to, we're going to output channel per value and change first column to values. And then um, from there, well, so this gives us all of our uh, pixels, right, from the image as uh, different values in a list. So it's kind of like our MIDI list. Um, so it has 64 values. So 
we can just pipe this into a rename. And I'm going to use a select to select our MIDI input from over here. And I'm just going to lock it so that it just maintains the list. And then this can go in here. And now we have all the MIDI names for all of the different buttons. So from here, I'm going to go into a logic and keep it as off when zero or less so that um, it's just doing on and off messages um, so that it's not sending too many repeated messages that are the same. And then from here, I'm going into a MIDI out and I'm going to make that device two, which is Ableton. And that should be good to go. So now, let me go into the B solver. Oh. We have this MIDI out, which is being sent to Ableton. Via loop B. Can you guys hear it? Not yet. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm going to reshare my screen. Just double check this MIDI. Well, I'm having some trouble, um, but you can see that um, it's changing the the launch pad um, where it lights up. It's it doesn't actually line up. You'd have to like flip it. Um, as you can see, the circle is in the lower left, and um, the sphere is in the top left. Uh, but just to demonstrate that there's MIDI feedback coming out of it. Um, so the idea is you put your Ableton or your synthesizer as your out device, and then this sends all of your MIDI values to that, um, depending on where it hits on the grid. Uh, it's not working at the moment, but I swear it works. Uh, we can check it out in the breakout room, just so I don't eat up everyone's time. Thank you for watching my presentation. Um, sorry it didn't work out as planned, but hey, that's how things work. And MIDI is just one of those things. So see you in the breakout room. OK, sorry. Thank you so much, Ian. That was really, really cool to watch. So uh, what didn't work? So you, we wanted to trigger a sound as well, right? Yeah. Um, or I don't know. For some reason, loop B, I guess, maybe wasn't working. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? Uh, here, can I share again real quick? Sure, sure, go ahead. Sorry. So loop B, if um, you do something crazy, it'll mute itself. Uh, it'll say, like, MIDI feedback warning, mm -hmm. muting. So that I think that's what the problem was. Uh, silly me. So now we should get some... MIDI. Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. That's really nice. And yeah, it like changes the notes depending on where it hits. So Very you cool. build some kind of generative landscape that mm -hmm. gives you some random noises that you like.
and then you can make a weird song. Do All right, thank you guys. Sorry, yeah, do you perform with it? Is it part of some bigger setup that you use for performances? Um, it's just kind of a thing that I made, and I, I maybe use it down the line for something. Um, but it's just kind of a fun generative music tool, I guess. Hey, what else can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you ever tried to use Houdini's Terrain Chop? You might be able to export that as an FBX and use that as your landscape because there's quite a lot of intricate stuff you can do with that chopping Houdini. Just a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. I um, I was just using the uh, the grid in here. Um, it doesn't need to be super high res because uh, it's interacting with the launch pad, but I could see how... Um, you might want to like fractalize it or you know make it higher resolution or a different shape to fit a different midi controller um yeah that's a good idea uh okay i'm gonna stop sharing my screen thank you everybody yeah thank you that was very very illuminating all right so uh yeah thank you very much Let's uh, now move on to the second presenter, which is going to be Jean-Francois Renault. And um, yeah, the stage is yours. <laughs> thank you, Billy. Uh, thank, thank you, Jan, also. Uh, I, I'm very interested in this uh, idea of uh, creating the, star, the, the sounds from scratch or, or f let's say like events that you don't have complete control because when the ball is dropping, it moves around and then you assist to the, let's say, the uh, computational, uh, compositional also music that uh, generate by itself. So that's a bit also the main point of my, my presentation uh, in the sense uh, that I put little notes here. Uh, if people um, will watch the video later on, they can stop the the player and have a look about this but uh, I, I was interested in uh, in a, another way to explore the principle of uh, synchronization audio and image uh, most of the time you know when uh, the um, audio visualization that you can see or found uh, as a tutorial or as a um, most of the time what people uh, will done is like uh, grabbing the signal, the audio signal, use it, uh, analyzing it, using it as a source that with maybe, you know, the amplitude or the frequency, it gonna affect the, 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 the visual aspect. So that, that's uh, one way I was interested in the other kind of synchroni synchronization. Also with MIDI, because for me, I think it, it can offer interesting possibilities, uh, especially like it could be very precise, it could be uh, very discreet, like, you know, in kind of a... Uh, and also mainly you have control uh, from the start. It's not like a... a uh, something that you react to or and you um, when you when you get the sound in and you your um, tributaire let's say to, to, of the of the ability to make a, a precise analysis analysis there's a couple of good tools also of course for for this but uh, I'm 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 interested in the idea of a of uh, building it from scratch, building uh, the sound and the image from a generative perspective. So uh, creating my own MIDI message in, in Touch Designer, which is of course possible. <coughs> I got some also exa example for a reference project that I, I suggest if you don't know them have a look. Uh, one of them, Geo Musica from uh, Rui Gato. Uh, it's already on the deriv derivative uh, um, community on on on, on a, a presentation. There's a lot of uh, nice nice project. It's really a big big thing. It's uh, a whole instrument by itself. 
And the other one is also Mimo Act, and I don't know if you know this uh, creator, but he's really exceptional. And he made a lot of uh, what he calls simple harmonic motion. That's right. And uh, he, um, uh, he, he made those kind of uh, virtual mechanical instrument that uh, play sounds. So again, you, you by this, you, you kind of assist to... Um, to uh, the object, a uh, virtual object moving, but uh, uh, generating sounds, and it's very pleasing to see like the uh, the synchronicity that happens. You know, uh, <clears throat> that is quite pleasant to uh, observe. I guess you, I hope you hear it. I think yes. Um, Okay, thanks. Um, so, <clears throat> about those uh, projects, I will, I will um, open a couple of um, projects that I made recently just to explore this a bit more. Um, <clears throat> I don't get, <laughs> I'm not yet to the, the, the quality level that uh, I showed you by those two masters, let's say, but. Uh, um, uh, I <clears throat> we can start by um, figuring out, let's say, the the basics uh, first. So, all those uh, tow file I can again in the breakout room. I, I can't uh, opening o opening them again. Sorry, um, and uh, we can get into the details. But just for now, the the just to have uh, the overview just uh, to tell that there's couples of ways to create and build and send message, MIDI messages. Uh, maybe you already know that the MIDI message could have different form. You have the controllers, the continuous controllers, and you have the note. Uh, the note uh, itself have uh, special properties of the, the information of, uh, about the velocity, which make MIDI more interesting that then uh, I don't know, just controlling from a mouse or a keyboards because those uh, are only like Boolean value, right? it's on and off. But MIDI with the velocity, you get uh, more uh, something more right? more fine. And the, as you as we we have seen with with Jan, the 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 most uh, let's say easy way is like to have control about the name of the channel that you send to the midzi out chop uh, this is the family of the chop of course and the midzi out because you have the already made uh, uh, le the, the letter that here here like let's say if you if you want to send no uh, note then you have to um, build the name of the channel precisely with, let's say here, CH for channel, channel 1, you know maybe that there are 16 channels in MIDI, then N for note, and then the note index, which range from 0 to 127. Uh, it, it's limited, MIDI is limited uh, with the number of message, uh, different messages you can send to 128. And it's also limited a bit about the precision of the message. Uh, it, it, it's, it can go uh, more precise than, uh, again, uh, velocity to about uh, to 128 steps. So that's, it's not the OSC protocol, but uh, again, I found it uh, uh, interesting to, to use uh, because it's, for me, I think it's better than in, in the musical also, in the audio visualization, it's, you get the subtleties that, uh, um, that you won't get with a, a, a logic pulse. Just to, again, have a quick look. The other way to send, uh, build and send a MIDI message, either note or controller, is to uh, uh, wrote scripts. Uh, you know, uh, maybe that uh, every operator in uh, in Touch Designer, if I go here in MIDI out and uh, sorry, and I check here with the the MIDI out uh, chop class, 
I will get details about uh, all the attributes or, and methods that I can uh, use. So there's a lot, there's a lot. There is uh, uh, some of them to uh, control uh, um, the, uh, a precise node or uh, send like a, <laughs> all nodes off in case of panic. You know, you have sometimes a panic button that just close every node. But uh, that's it. So, and in this approach here, I uh, will mention that I use a lot then the um, chop execute. Uh, the, in the dat, you have the ability to uh, build uh, or use operator that you can put script and associate it with events coming from other operators. So the chop execute are listening to uh, an event from uh, uh, let's see this chop here, what, which I call node on and node off. And uh, you have different definition and you have to pick. But the, the message itself can be also, you can grab value from uh, other place. Huh? So uh, in a lot of those machines that I will show you, uh, I try to apply it uh, because I have the control either of the Note index, so the pitch you heard, the velocity, eventually the duration of the note. It's the dis difference between the, the time I, I, I pulse the signal, uh, signal of the note on and then uh, the note off signal. So uh, that's the problem <laughs> with the note on, note off, is that you need to, uh, <coughs> you need to control the note off. Okay, so here on the back I have this sampler application from Native Instrument and it received right now the different notes. Every note have its own random velocity, okay? So that's really uh, interesting. Then you can hear the sound with uh, a lot of variation. So it, it gives uh, uh, something quite less mechanical, all right? <clears throat> okay, so uh, we'll try here now. Um, to, okay, <clears throat> we'll have a look about the triggering methods. It's a work work in progress. I, I am never satisfied about the the last version of uh, um, the way that I found to control the the message. Uh, everything you know could be optimized a lot, but mainly here what we have is uh, inside this container here, we have the, the little part of the network here that receive the impulsion, let's say, it's a logic with uh, just sending a pulse, this uh, 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 increase a counter and Again, it, it allow me to control for every time I'm gonna hit the one on my normal keyboard and not the MIDI keyboard, the normal keyboard. Uh, I will get different velocity and different duration in frame. So this one is more strong. This is, and how it looks then, it looks like this. So that's for me the first part. To just have something, I have full control of the timing of the events, but also the, as you can maybe, you can hear, I change the note. Okay, see, so if, this, if the notes, uh, uh, the sound is, is uh, the amplitude is more loud, let's say, then the image should be also like bigger or the, the shape should be like more light or more, uh, uh, more light in it. Something that reflects the quality of the, the, am the, the amplitude and the, the pitch eventually of the sound. I have a, another one with uh, where I manage chords. So eventually, if I saw someone ask question, is it possible to send multiple message at the same time? Yes, of course. Uh, it, it gives a little bit more complex because again, you. Need... Sorry. Panic 
button. Stop, stop the message. Uh, we'll try to uh, bring this in a more light sound. Let's say we'll just get rid of uh, some instrument right there. Okay, so um, here an example. So this is chord. You can vary the input here I control manual manually again with my keyboard uh, with the letter uh, the number one I can shoot change the chord okay so this strategy here is more like uh, uh, using of course the instancing process in touch designer uh, so I can uh, Let's say go up for now. I can uh, you I get a grid of 10 by 10, so I have the ability to um, let's say uh, pulse 100 notes eventually. And uh, this looks like a bit like the the your uh, strategy, Yan, with the the terrain. It's like a, a grid like thing. Okay, so. Uh, the other part uh, I, I, I test is if you, of course, if you get control with MIDI, the other, uh, oh, sorry, I will just, uh, whoops, lowering, lowering this a bit. Um, the MIDI protocol is possible to save a, a, a file in that format and to bring it inside of touch. Huh? You can, uh, you can be completely generative, make the the process of building the message, but you can also, of course, here import uh, this MIDI file. It's a little piece of a piano that I transcribe uh, by here. I just listen to it and I just build my own MIDI partition, let's say, or score. And I uh, bring that to a timer, so I'll have this uh, old, uh, let's say, three-dimensional instrument that will, uh, let's see if I put back the, the volume. So let's trigger the main timer. Cool. Again, a lot of resemblance, resemblance to the strategies that Jan, you showed us, the grid that helped distribute those shapes, <laughs> which reminds me like Nespresso capsule coffee. And uh, the, uh, the velocity thing that eventually going to affect the scale. So, and as you can see, it's, it's quite reactive, it's precise. Uh, it can manage uh, multiple signal at the same time. So uh, the other project I, I, I did again with this, I just tried to push a little bit more the, the, the let's see, I will ch I'm going to change the, I'm going to change the instrument here. I'm going to just use the basic the instrument that you found. Okay, what's happening now is this. Okay, so you see it's like a scan line. 
It's like a scan, a scan line going uh, over a different shape. <coughs> uh, the collision between the line and the outline of those, uh, of those different shapes creates an event. And, and the event, uh, all events are sent as uh, MIDI messages to the sampler or the instrument. And of course, you can see that I use the height, uh, the Y value to just uh, make this um, uh, in, in um, let's say, <laughs> to make this like uh, according to the, the, the note index or the pitch you heard. And it, this starts like to uh, to <laughs> to uh, show the, my uh, the, the basic idea that I wrote in my in my conclusion. Eh? It's eventually like the it's it, the fun part of, of this is like to create for the 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 the, peep, the the person who's listening and looking at the audiovisual effect that. Uh, they get the ability to follow huh, the event in time. So, uh, if you can, when when it's there's a satisfix. Oh, sorry, there's a satisfaction associ associated with the this uh, pleasure that if you look at something and you can hear a sound, and eventually you hear the same sound while you're following the object again. I think we can feel a, it's a root in our cognitive and perceptual, you know, uh, uh, the, the inhabits, let's say, or the, the, the way that we uh, we all all build with those same uh, <laughs> those same uh, kind of a pleasure, looking pleasure. So. This small one here, it's like floating balls uh, moving back and forth, but again, uh, maybe around, I don't know, uh, 80 notes floating in the air, but couples of them are triggered. You can hear the sound and I play, of course, I took the velocity and I play with the size of the balls and the lighting and the effects that make this uh, in sync <laughs> that's it okay so you uh, you can see me be also there with my my the, my key i just inside that i build the two different chords so that's the eventually i'm looking to uh, build something with a really uh, more let's say interesting and comp com compositional um, quality in it i have a bit of background of musician and i i know that uh, you can here's the note number that is used on discord and i sometimes i listen to music and i just it just gave me id and here's the way that the the note are triggering with a very, let's say, a quick sequence. Let's see here. If it's a noise, then we have a different aspect. It's less mechanical. So that's it. So this is a the, the quick look. Uh, in the breakout room, as I said, whenever you want, I can't um, open one of them and uh, maybe show the, the the details. And I invite uh, everyone to have a look at those uh, nice projects I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. Let's add also this tradition of the animation machine that make music. See also the work of uh, Stefan Malinowski. Uh, <laughs> You make a machine that you can play. Uh, you can play uh, a Beethoven symphony on the piano, but with one hand <laughs> on the keyboard. So that's very interesting. 
Okay, so that's that's it. Thank you so much, Jean Francois. That okay. was super interesting. I'm very excited to to uh, you know try out some of those ideas myself. So yeah, thank you <laughs> for being part of this. So um, as a third presenter, I'm I'm gonna show uh, some stuff myself. So right, I'm gonna also share my screen in a second. Basically, what I'm what I'm gonna show you is a project I've been working on the last couple of months, like on and off, always when I had like time and energy to do that. And uh, my basic idea is to build a. Um, to build a tool that that people can just you know just open the the tow file so it's in, inside of touch designer just kind of like a you know you open it up uh you you want to perform with someone so you want to make visuals for an artist or you also like for a musician or your musician myself yourself and you want to um accompany your your music with uh, visuals quite easily so i built this ui and this sort of system um for to to make that very easy and i know there's some stuff out there already like simple mixer um but uh yeah i haven't really found the, the perfect tool for myself so i i, I thought I, i'm just gonna try to like make it myself um but you also have like to know you know i haven't really um i don't know actually like nobody taught me python or anything i've just been like looking that up and just getting into it that way and just trying out. So what, what I'm basically looking for here is to just, you know, present it, but also to, to see if people are interested in collaborating and to, you know, testing it out and stuff like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So do you all see the uh, yeah. UI? Yeah. All right, perfect. So um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna go through it. So this is not like a formal presentation, I'm just gonna like walk you through that kind of. Um, and this is like an early alpha version, so just so you know. Um, right, so it's, I kind of thought of it um, as kind of going from left to right. So the only thing kind of going out, outside of that is that you, you always put the visuals uh, inside of here on the right. But other than that, it's sort of like you 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 input stuff here, you ch you change that here, and then you output that on the right. So it's sort of going from left to right. Uh, so you have these all these different sections here. <clears throat> the first section up here on the uh, top left is the input. So you have the file and device input. So usually when you're like performing, you're going to use the device some kind of interface. And uh, for testing, or you know, if you just want to like uh, present visuals and use songs for that, you can just go ahead and do that here. So I can play a song here, and I can select any song from here. And um, then you also have this clock up here. I'm going to show this part in a second. Um, you also have a clock up here, so you can like uh, sort of uh, adjust the uh, BPM to to the current song. You can also link the whole thing with Ableton. I don't have Ableton open right now, but technically if it's open, you can just easily link the uh, tempo from there. And if you change it here, it's gonna be changed in Ableton and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'm also gonna include more Ableton, like I, I'm gonna include Ableton more in the, in the future, but I, I haven't done that that far yet. So then you also have the output here. You can change some stuff about that. And um, here you can drop um, visuals. So if you have a look here, I have a few visuals just for testing, uh, and you can just take one of them and uh, just put that in here, and it's going to be loaded into there. And so you create this list of, of talks files and can really be any talks. So you can just create your talks, make custom parameters. And if you have created custom parameters, um, uh, wait, no, one second. Okay, of course there is an error right now, <laughs> as always when you present. So technically um, we have this, um, so I'll just put that in here. We have this button here. Uh, so until now it has always worked. <laughs> so um, of course it doesn't now, but technically you can select a visual here and then click on this uh, play button 
and then it's going to be um, faded into that so you can like switch between them and uh, the fading is super smooth so because it's already like loaded in when you like drop it in here so i would suggest you know when you start your performance you drop all your i don't know 20 visuals or something in there and then you can just select that and usually <laughs> uh, you can like fade from one to the other right so then you can output uh, your visuals and the cool thing is now let me actually use a visual that we can change so as you can see you you get the um the custom parameters right in here so so far it's just sliders and buttons but uh yeah you can just change them here you can easily instantly see the output and you can always see these um like m's here that stands for like manual and uh on, on all of these m's you can drop modifiers so I kind of thought of it as a, like, because, you know, you generally have the system in touch designer where you have chops that you can export to everything. So I kind of thought of this, um, this idea and wanted to like put that into, into a UI in a way. So if you look here, if I play this song, we have the speed detection that I, uh, last week I gave a workshop about that. So it's using exactly that technique, but also I added some UI to it so you can easily change it and, um, so you can like detect kicks, snare, and hats, and also a general level. So for example, now I can drag this kick and put that on a period, and it's gonna change the period instantly. So I can also like smooth that out, and I can also change here on the kick um, how that's affecting the parameter. So now I can also drag this channel onto anything else. So I can also, like here we have a post effects section, so I'm gonna just pause this quickly. So we have like a post effects um, section so we can just um, put any kind of effects like blurring or mirroring all the st standard stuff. I'm also gonna add more there. We can just add that to the uh, output. So it's some, it's very similar to Resolume. And then you can use the, this channel to also change the uh, like on off, for example. So I can like go down here with the brightness and when the kick hits the uh, level is now being uh, turned on and off and I can do the same thing with the snare for every parameter and now you can see it's working and um, so we have uh, kick snare and hats detection and it's uh, I, I found this now to work pretty well we also have some other sections here so um, this is for example based on the clock so we're going like one, two, three, four, and then start again. And we, we're using like the whole and the halves and four quarters and eighths and sixteenths here. So you can like, they're always like uh, mapped, uh, matched to the clock up here. And uh, we also have this uh, rhythm that I can't show that right now because I don't have Ableton open and also the connection to Ableton still like shows some bugs um, hey, since the last version. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to share. I don't know if you're seeing the chat. I think some of your UI is missing on screen for us. I don't know if you have oh, really those. Maybe okay. if you shared like your whole desktop. We'd be able to see that. I don't okay. know. Okay. Okay. One That's second. On uh, I'm gonna share this. Is it better? Oh, that's great. Yeah, we right. can, we thank can. you. Thank you for pointing, pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, I've had some problems with the perform window and uh, um, presenting this. Right, so we have uh, all the rhythm section here. I'm not sure now what you saw or what you didn't see. Um, but right, so here the audio section, the rhythm section. Here's a mini section. So I have my MIDI controller uh, set up right now. And I can like, uh, you know, that's just uh, the usual MIDI section here. So you have these channels and you can also use these channels on any uh, parameters. So now I can just drag them, uh, should be the, the right one. Now I can just drag uh, the MIDI onto there and also change that. So all of these uh, parameters where you have the M, you can control with any modifier. That's kind of the, the thought behind it. And uh, for Ableton, I'm gonna do like the same thing, just gonna add more stuff in here for the different tracks in an Ableton project, for example. And we also have, I also have ideas for connecting and leap motion. I also don't have the connector right now, but for example, so you can like use your uh, hand 
position to control parameters or like your fingers position if you have a leap motion and just connect that and just start. So it's kind of an easy, easy way to connect that. And um, then we also have some constants. So just, you know, some noise animation, just a constant here I can just put on there uh, just to diff the whole thing. So I don't make it more I'm interesting. sorry to interrupt, but I think it's still not updating. Like we saw you clicking on media enabler, but I don't think it's updating for us. Oh, okay. Uh, that's yeah. so that's so weird. Yeah, it's just like the first Okay, image. now it is. Oh beautiful. That way? It's better? And now it blocked again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. Oh it's back. It's back now? Now it's off. Man, so now it's back? Uh, yes. yes. So weird. So because of my, it's okay. really intermittent. The Liam. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> That's super strange. I wish I could change this somehow. All right, so I'm gonna try something else. Sorry about this. I'm gonna stop my sharing for a second. And, uh... Okay, do you see it now? <laughs> no, it's frozen. It's frozen again. So strange. Wait, uh, it's oh. kind of moving-ish, sort of. Here we go. Oh man! Like I think it's only updating when you're not focused on the on the window. Itself. Apparently, yeah. It seems like it, it makes zero sense. Okay, well. Um, it's kind of hard to show without using it. <laughs> try it. Try it in a floating window as, a pl as opposed to perform mode. Would that help? Right, right, right. Okay, so I'm going to go here and change it to borders on. Does it work now? And if... uh, are, you are you clicked on it? This way? Oh. I think it's working. I think it's working. It just seems a little laggy. Yeah, so. yeah we can see the uh, I.O. the audio on the left-hand side. It's a bit more real-time now, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. I mean, can we, can, can, I dare you to show us the patch. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> is it, is you, do you see anything animated? Because there's, Quite some stuff that's, yeah. that's no, moving I think here. it's fine because we can see it. The noise is moving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. I wish uh, you could actually see this uh, properly. Um, well, so I mean, I've, I've kind of went through the whole thing now, but uh, I'm not sure if you all like uh, saw the whole thing now. But um, yeah, basically, yeah. basically the yeah. idea is, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can go over it quickly again because um, it would really help because uh, I was lost in most of it. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. I'll, I'll go over it. Um, you don't all right. So on the left here, we have sort of the, the audio and the input section. So we have up here, we have a file and device input. So um, uh, as you can see, this uh, instantly reacts to me speaking. And um, I can uh, input files here as well. Um, so I can just play a file and uh, select any uh, any file that I wish. So I'm just gonna use like, this for example. And um, then I have like this modifiers section here on the left uh, where I can switch between different sorts of uh, modifiers which I can use on any of these uh, parameters here. So I have these parameters of any kind of visual that I can like uh, load in. So I can load in any talks, just drop that in here. And it will like as soon as I select it and use it as the show visual, uh, these uh, parameters here are being updated uh, instantly. And we can then change them by uh, using uh, all these modifiers. So. These modifiers here are uh, just a beat detection that I showed last week in the, in the workshop. And then we also have the rhythm section, which is uh, based on the um, clock up here. So we have the internal clock. So 
so which is based on the beat shop and the, the BPM of, of the entire project, of course. And then we have the Ableton section, so where, where we can um, connect to Ableton, to the Ableton, uh, to to instantly connect like the BPMs of both softwares and to, to match the, the one and stuff like that. And uh, then we have um, the, the a preset system as well, so I can like change them some uh, parameters here, and then technically I, nothing is working now, of course. <laughs> well, usually I can um, save uh, any kind of um, you know uh, state of of these parameters here and change, save them, those as a preset and then and switch quickly like switch between the different presets. And then we also have this uh, post FX section, so this is very similar to Resolume, where we can have things like mirroring, level, blur, and stuff like that. And all these things we can like um, we can change with um, these modifiers, and those can be really anything. This can also be MIDI, as I showed. So I have my MIDI controller mapped here, and I can just uh, yeah use one channel here and drag that onto here. And then I can like change the gain. You can hopefully see that sort of down here. And the same thing I can like, for example, go like here with the uh, MIDI. And then I could also use the kick on the period, so I can like have a mix of different modifiers and uh, change stuff like that. And same with Ableton. Here it's currently empty, but there will be sections here where you can use, for example just a volume of one track and you have like a list of tracks here that you can all use to modify the visuals and then we also have the uh, misc section here well, for now i've just added some constants and um, also some noise just to animate your stuff a bit and uh, we can use this all on on other on these other um, post effects as well yeah, and up here we just have like we just output it to a projector or the monitor. Uh, we can have some some master adjustments for the outputs, and here's going to be some preferences. And um, yeah, I don't know. There's uh, a lot of stuff here. Like there, there's some stuff I here I want to show you, which as I said doesn't work now. It always did. And um, yeah, I think. That's kind of about it. I really want to like this is really a tool I want to I, I made for for a very simple usability. And I also have a background of UX design, so I, I actually studied interaction design, and so I'm I'm, I'm really uh, into making UIs and I try to make them very simple and still sort of good looking. I don't know how how performative this is. So I've I've tested this on my uh, like on my PC, which is quite powerful, which works very well, and also on my laptop, which works sort of well, but it doesn't have a very good graphics card, so that might be it. And I also like somebody else also tested it on a Mac, and it didn't work super well there. So there's just a lot of things here that still need to be refined and and like uh, extended. But I personally really like the, the the way this is structured, and I think this has some potential. So it would be nice if I could like, if other people want to help me with this, if they know some more Python than I do. And um, yeah, if you have ideas of uh, like features you wanna you wanna add to this or all these kind of things, um, then yeah, you can um, I don't know reach out to me in the, in the breakout rooms and. Uh, yeah, I can maybe share the file with some people so they can test it at some point. That was an idea. And Greg, of course, if you want to try this out, then you're very welcome to do so. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I hope uh, the presentation sort of worked now. <laughs> All right. So yeah. That is uh, that is it from my side. I really just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of what this is about. And uh, really the one main thing I want to do is connect this more deeply with Ableton because I'm seeing so many people using Ableton and they want to visualize what they're making. So I think it really makes sense. <laughs>